I listen. I can feel it. I experience it. And I breathe it. This is music to me. And who am I? My name is Nina, and I'm a music lover. And I'm about to take you on a journey into one of the craziest industries in the world. This is Connected by Frequency. Welcome, music lovers, to another episode of the Connected by Frequency podcast. My name is Nina, and I will be your host on this journey. For those who never watch this podcast, the idea is to invite various people involved in the electronic music industry development. This way, I will try to raise the awareness about this crazy but neglected industry. We all enjoy its products every single day, but we don't value enough the process, how is it made, and people who deliver the magic. This time, I invited a good friend of mine, an extremely talented producer and a DJ, who is sharing his knowledge and experience with everyone who wants to become a professional artist. But before we start, I need to kindly ask you for your generous support. If you like what you see and hear in this show, please make this easier for me by supporting me via Patreon or PayPal. All the information will be written in the video description and on the Connected by Frequency Facebook page. And please, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like and share this video with the world, and leave a comment if you have anything to say. I will much appreciate it. Thank you. Today, this extremely talented artist decided to enter our studio in Belgrade and share his passion for mixing and mastering. He is a German, a trans and progressive producer and a DJ, and he is about to take us on a trip to the innovative, experimental, challenging and more creative side of a production. What I like about him is his energy, open mind, professional approach and visionary character he is not afraid to share with the world and other artists. Supported and collaborated with a lot of big names in the scene, such as Armin van Buren, Above and Beyond, Marcus Schultz, and many others, he gained a reputation of being a high demand artist for his remix skills. He's a good friend of mine, and I'm delighted to welcome him in my show. Dennis Shepard, or should I call you Dr. Dirty? <laughs> Welcome, darling. <laughs> Thank you. Nice introduction. I liked it. I'm glad. <laughs> how, you, how do you like the studio so far? Very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah. Really cool. The lighting and um, the setting is, is very good. Yeah. So this is actually your first time here in Belgrade. Mm-hmm. Right? How do you like it so far? Very nice. Like The people are very friendly, um, really nice restaurants, um, just a nice atmosphere overall. Oh. Really nice. Yeah. Um, I'm glad. I'm. It's not that cool that you're not staying a little bit younger, a lot longer, because um, you know staying for three days it's not enough. But for the start, you're gonna yeah. come here <laughs> for sure once again. Okay. Um, I will need to mention all those projects you do mm-hmm. because I think it's extremely important to show everyone um, what you do, and even more important to raise the awareness um, of how significant part in the industry you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, this is a good opportunity to let young producers to find out something that could be useful and helpful in their future careers. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Um, tell me, or tell us actually, who is Dennis Shepard? How did you start doing this? <laughs> Actually, I was just a, a random guy who likes music, you know, and then uh, started uh, music production as a hobby. And then, uh, you know, I'm that kind of person when I start something, I get really eager to become better. Mm-hmm. And this is with everything. But um, with music production, I just never really stopped. So I wanted, always wanted to become better and it was so much fun. And um, after, you know, I think one or two years of fiddling around, um, small record labels became interested in signing my music and uh, this is how everything started. I think um, I registered my business in 2006, so Mm -hmm. quite a long while ago. (laughs) Um, And yeah, from that it just took off. Like um, I um, did um, my studies as well at university, but next to the studies I always did the music stuff and um, at one point I made it my main income source. So Mm. yeah. Nice, that's, that's nice, nice journey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but who was your idol? Let's call it that way. That um, got you into this industry. So actually, um, it was more. 
back then I was really looking up to my uncle. He was uh, he's like uh, 15 years older than me, and um, he was playing around with a very amateur music production software called Dance EJ. I don't know if you, it's no. like just putting blocks of music together and then you have a song. So it's very simple. And uh, I thought it sounded really cool. So I wanted to give that a try as well. And um, he's basically who got me started with this, like, um, because it was just so, so nice to see. And um, he also pushed me a bit in the beginning. Yeah, you, you can try this, you can try that. You know, oh, you're really talented. Do more of it, you know, and uh, so that was really nice. And then later on, of course, yeah, I mean, um, I always like I was I was a electronic dance music fan um, since the end of the 90s. So people like Blank and Jones, Paul Van Dyke, I really looked up to and um, West Bam as well back then, uh, Mogwai even, these kind of people. And uh, of course, it was like uh, it was a dream back then, like, wow, you know, once uh, I could perform in, pro in front of a big crowd and um, all of that. And then a few years later, yeah, it happened. And uh, I, I met some of my idols as well. And yeah, it was really cool. A cool journey. <laughs> Definitely. This is how it goes, yeah. <laughs> usually. Okay, here it is. Uh, a game changer term. I use it literally in every show. Okay. Because I think every one of us has that special moment that changed our career or perspective. So I think for you, it was in 2011 when uh, your track that you did with Cole Blue and Anna Criada as a vocalist called uh, Fallen Angel uh, hit number one on Beatport's trance chart. Mm -hmm. So that, that was actually a moment when a lot of big names uh, in the trance music uh, see, noticed you and got interested in doing collaborations with you, like mm -hmm. Rank One, Tala to XLC, Marcus Schultz, and so yeah. on. But how did you feel when that wheel started rolling? It was uh, amazing. Like, I mean, um, literally, I was, uh, I was still like the, the guy. Well, I mean, I was touring for a few years already, so I wasn't totally a newcomer, right? And uh, I had some other successful records before that. But mm -hmm. um, this was like, I was sitting at home, I was checking YouTube, and every few days I saw another video. Marcus Schulz playing it at, uh, I don't know, uh, a big festival, you know, uh, in the US. Armin van Buren playing it somewhere else, you know, like all around the world. I saw all of the big guys just playing this record everywhere, and it was just crazy. Like, people <laughs> went nuts about it, and uh, it's it was totally unexpected. Like, um, you never really know when you have a hit record, mm -hmm. and then it just hits you, <laughs> and uh, everyone's just going nuts about it. And um, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a great feeling, and um, yeah, all of a sudden, more people were interested in my music, which is, of course, nice. Um, I want to, because, like, um, let's face it, in the end, I want to make people kind of happy with my music, right? Mm -hmm. And if I can reach more people and can make more people happy with it, then mm -hmm. better, better for me. I feel more satisfied, you know? So that was a really cool feeling, yeah. That is the point, I think. Mm. <laughs> but why do you think it happened with this exact track? I honestly, I don't know. I don't. I think it was the the catchy vocal, the mm -hmm. um, melody behind it. Um, it was all very, very catchy, and um, I think just the combination of everything. The mm -hmm. maybe the timing as well. Like um, High Contrast Recordings released the record, and they did a really good job in uh, hyping up my name. Um, leading towards my first album release. So mm -hmm. I think before that I did a remix for Above and Beyond, Sun and Moon. Um, I did several re remixes for bigger names, so people got more interested in my name and we just built up a small hype. And then there was this one big record and then everyone was just like, yeah, this guy is cool, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> that's, yeah. that, that's a really cool story. Yeah. But not long after that, I mean, you did Extraordinary Remixes for Armin van Buren, A Boy and Beyond, Garrett Hamery, Marco Schultz, Rex. Uh, and not forget to mention beautiful vocals that you collaborated with, uh, such as Christina Novelli, Jess, that was guest in my previous show, yeah. Anna Criado, Silvia Tosun, and Jonathan Mendelssohn, for example, and so on. So, so on and so on. Uh, so we all know that vocals are often to find in trance music, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but what do you think uh, this is the case with this specific genre? Why do you think it is? Mm, I'm actually not sure. Um, I think 
Um, it's just the trance music is very emotional, I would say, and um, if if the if there's a vocal that matches the like the music and is is um, like telling a story, um, I think it just can I intensify the the emotions from the record. So I think mm -hmm. um, this is why, and it can also it it goes very well with like. The way trans producers um, affect the vocals it makes a big difference as well. Like they put a lot of reverb and delay, and it all flows with the music. So I think you get like this this dreamy vibe, and um, I think this is why it works so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm, nice. it just it just kind of melts with the music and um, takes you on a journey. I think. I can definitely agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, melody actually became more important in some other genres nowadays, mm -hmm. um, um, more than it was before. Uh, yeah. What is your general opinion about this? I, I honestly, I'm, I'm super open-minded, so I don't mind, uh, you know, minimal techno that is like a, sounds like a loop for seven minutes, you know, and doesn't <laughs> change. Um, if people like it, great, you know, and. Uh, I can appreciate some of that music as well, but um, I also love the melodies and I love mm -hmm. um, sometimes happy melodies, sometimes melancholic melodies. So it always depends on the mood and the setting. Like um, if you're at a pool party, you want different music than at a big festival, than in an underground club, you know, like it always depends on the environment. So mm -hmm. um, it's actually the, the beauty of music, I would say, that we have so many different varieties and music, for, like every kind of music fits a certain setting. So. You know the lift music, you know, like, <laughs> like chill out music, you know. So I don't know, like um, it's great. That's the great thing about music, I think. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. <laughs> so you played at some nice festivals, like mm -hmm. Ministry of Sound in London, Exchange Club in LA, State of Trance festivals, a couple of times. Of course, I need to mention it. Actually, my first State of Trance was in Bulgaria. Um, yeah. It was a 600 edition, and I think it happened in 2013. If, 13, if I'm 2013, not, yeah. If I'm I not mistaken, so. yeah. okay. Um, and for me, it was a really special experience. And uh, just to mention that you were part of it, so you were playing over there. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what uh, gig left the best, uh, the biggest impression um, on you? I would actually say it was this state of trance in Bulgaria. Yeah, because. Oh. Um, I didn't have any idea about Bulgaria before that, you know, and um, this kind of, um, and I think Bulgarians didn't have s such a big idea about me as an artist, but like, it was like, um, so I was playing at, as the last artist uh, at that event, so I think it was 5.30 to 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. or so, so pretty late, but a lot of people stayed, and um, I think I, I played the right tracks at the right time, so people really wanted to stay and see the whole set. And it kind of, yeah, it built a whole new fan base for me, like a whole new market opened up for me. Um, mm -hmm. So that was great. Two months later, I was back at a, a sold out club, amazing experience. Um, that club show was actually organized by someone called V Boneva, and um, she later on became my manager. So <laughs> it opened a lot of doors for me. Um, I went back every every single year after that to Bulgaria. I have a really, really dedicated fan base there. And um, I just also learned about the country, the culture and um, how nice it is. And yeah, it was, it was a, a door opener for me, this event. So and of course, the event itself was amazing. Like, I mean, playing in front of such a big crowd and getting such nice reactions. It's like, um, when you play to such a big crowd, it's not the typical thing for me. So I usually play more like club events. So playing a big uh, festival or big event with such a big crowd is you get really like goosebump mo moments uh, mm -hmm. and you shaking a bit like from the adrenaline. So <laughs> which is, it is cool once in a while, <laughs> I suppose. I it yeah. is different for sure than playing in a club, for example, yeah. for a smaller crowd. But yeah, I think it's super amazing. Okay, I forgot to mention Unconscious Festival mm -hmm. in Thailand. Uh, I think it that this was actually the last um, festival that you were, where we where you played yep. uh, before the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It was uh, last year in February. Um, but I know that you like Asia. <laughs> yeah, I do. But what is you know something that you really like about it that much that you always return? <laughs> It's a combination of everything. So it's like um, the nature is beautiful and you have like so many different 
thing. I mean, you you have that all around the world, but um, like I said, the combination of all of the things that I like in Asia, that's what makes it so special. So the nature, you have the mountains, you have uh, amazingly beautiful beaches, um, then the people. The people are mm -hmm. super friendly, always smiley, um, just helpful. Um, so uh, I'm speaking about Southeast Asia. So like, you know, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, this mm -hmm. kind of region, mm -hmm. Vietnam uh, as well. So um, the people, then the, the weather is amazing. Sometimes a bit too humid, but most of the times very enjoyable. Um, then, I don't know, it's just the atmosphere. Like um, there's Buddhism and Hinduism in this region of the world and a little bit of Islam and um, it's just, The, the general feel is just people are very, they feel a bit more grounded than in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I don't know, you, um, I would say as a, as a European, you really um, get a lot for your money as well, which is pretty nice, I would say. If you're on holiday somewhere, I mean, that's a, that's a plus, I would say. <laughs> Completely <Yeah. laughs> agree. Completely agree. Okay, uh, but I, I know that you wanted to move to Bali. Mm -hmm. Uh, last year, but the pandemic stopped you from achieving that goal. Uh, do you still have the intention to move over here? Yes. Um, I mean, Bali is still my, my, my favorite place in the world. So mm -hmm. at one point, I would definitely love to move there. Um, we'll see how everything develops. To be honest, I'm not so optimistic that, you know, um, this part of the world will open up anytime soon. So... We will see. We will see how everything goes. Exactly. Yeah. Let's let's wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this leads us to one of your projects, but let's start uh, with the core one. So you are a producer, first of all. Mm -hmm. And what exactly does that mean? I mean, you are a serious professional uh, when it comes to mixing and mastering, um, shaping and polishing not only yours but some other artists' tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, but how did it actually start? How did did you get the idea to to try it? So, I mean, um, music production is, um, it involves a lot of things, right? Um, like a music producer is basically like someone who um, combines many different aspects of the, of the production and makes it the whole song, basically. So, mm -hmm. you have the composition part, you have the mixing and mastering, you have the uh, arrangement part, you have the sound design. So, these are all different aspects of music production. Um, but for me, there has always been uh, like mixing and mastering has always been the easiest from all of these parts. Like it's just uh, it comes naturally to me. Like um, mm -hmm. from the beginning, my records sounded really good. Like I, I can listen to a record that I produced in 2007 and I can still say this sounds great. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, m not many producers have this. They listen to their records exactly. from a few years ago and they're like, oh, my God. Exactly. But uh, no, I don't have that at all. Like. Um, so, and I have heard this from other producers as well, like uh, when I was uh, with Rank One in the studio, he, uh, Benno told me like, yeah, your productions, they sound really great, like um, great sound and stuff. So it's like, um, I don't know, it just comes naturally to me. So obviously you, you do stuff in the field that feels easy for you and mm -hmm. is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it's a lot of fun being in the studio and polishing a record, making it uh, sound the best possible way. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you were born for this. <laughs> okay, uh, so can you tell us more about the Sound Better platform? What mm -hmm. can artists find there? Um, it's more some, uh, something for uh, professional music producers who want to offer certain services to other people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, everyone can create a profile there and... Um, I myself have one, uh, have a profile there, and I offer things like, like I said, like mixing and mastering. I offer just mastering. I offer even ghost production if someone wants that. But um, um, I've I've started doing less of that. Um, <laughs> even one-on-one -on -one teaching, you can book through that, and um, many different things. Uh, mm -hmm. I can do vocal processing and vocal tuning, uh, which is a whole another field. Um, so you can book all these kind of different services through that and Sound Better works like a middleman. So they keep the money until the client is happy and then it, it's being released to me. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Okay. <laughs> um, so you mentioned this, but this also means that you're doing a ghost production. 
little uh, bit here and there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in case some of you didn't know and you're not familiar with the term, this is a business a lot of producers are actually doing, but it stands for a producing track for another artist who releases the track under his or her name. Um, sounds weird, right? <laughs> so this also means those artists' names shouldn't be revealed in public, you know? That's true. So yeah. Dennis... Uh, Tell us, who did you do ghost production for? <laughs> <laughs> I really I cannot tried. answer I that. tried, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but actually, uh, I have a lot of uh, friends, uh, and I'm wondering, you know, mm -hmm. uh, regarding that. Uh, they're extremely talented producers and DJs, for sure. Yeah. But at some point in their lives, they decided, you know, to focus only on ghost production. Um, but it's for me, it's, it's, it's strange because isn't, you know, the idea when you started doing it to become like a famous DJ or a producer? No, no, not, not necessarily. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people just um, enjoy the music production thing and that's it like um, my first passion was being in the studio all by myself like a geek and just doing music production all day and nothing else so because that was just a lot of fun for me and uh, then the DJing part came and um, you know me being an artist and all of this but um, at first it was just I love music production I want to mm -hmm. do that all day and uh, I don't care about anything else so in if someone has that passion and they are not big enough as an artist themselves or they don't want to be in the spotlight, then ghost production is the perfect thing for them mm -hmm. because they can still pay their bills with their passion. It's perfect, I think. Okay, but you know, if your name stays unknown and you do something like that... There's a lot of ghost producers who are amazingly talented mm -hmm. and you wouldn't even know who they are. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. I'm you, sure. You would have never heard of them, but they have made the biggest tracks mm -hmm. in France. Oh, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, there's one guy called Dennis Shimonik. Um, he has mm -hmm. produced a lot of uh, Paul Van Dyke records and Alex, uh, co-engineered. Let's say it like that. I heard that. Um, you never know how much the actual artists um, were involved and stuff. So mm -hmm. let's let's call it co uh, co-produced. And he did it with uh, Paul Van Dyke, Alex Morf, uh, Jan Van Dynhoven, and some other names. You can look it up on Discogs.com. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. a public. Um, um, like um, website where you can uh, type in a name mm -hmm. and then you see the uh, like the credits of records so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's publicly available this information you just type in Dennis Shimonik and then you see which productions he was involved in mm, nice yeah. I will check that for sure <laughs> <laughs> sounds interesting okay uh, what else are you providing to young artists at the beginning of their careers you're also doing music production master classes mm -hmm. Uh, are we talking about specific genre or not? Um, no, because I um, I can produce basically I can produce any electronic dance music genre. They they all have their specific things, but once you figure these out, then it's very easy. Then it's all the same. Mm -hmm. So um, my my students. So I I teach people uh, beginners uh, or inter intermediates. Uh, you know, music production and make them a better producer. And some of my students, they, they do like deep house, uplifting trance, progressive trance, progressive house, uh, side trance, wow. anything. So wow. it's really, yeah, it doesn't really matter so much. A huge range. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's meet Dennis as an instructor. <laughs> yeah. Please explain to everyone watching, uh, what is the idea of this teaching service of yours mm -hmm. uh, and how is it going do you have a lot of students or yeah i do actually so um mm -hmm. this was uh let's take it chronologically so i started as a music producer no right in 2006 mm -hmm. then the gigs came in 2009 then um, i had a lot of gigs and so on and then in 2017 uh, i think i had my 2016 i had my first student um he got introduced to me by Ronsky Speed because he asked Ronsky Speed, hey, do you teach music production? <laughs> and he said, no, but I know someone who may be a good nice. instructor. <laughs> so he referred him to me. And uh, from that point on, um, we started working together. So he was one of my first students. And then from that, it just took off. I, it, it was a lot of fun for me. And um, so I got more students. Like it was more like a mouth by mouth thing. I don't really actively advertise so much for it. Mm -hmm. And um, 
yeah, from time to time I get a request and if the chemistry is there and I, I think I can help them, uh, we start uh, like a instructor uh, student relationship, you know, and nice. that's it. That's really yeah. nice that you're doing that. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's, um, it's very fulfilling when you see the students, you know, like when it's, it's hard to describe, like, uh, Whoever has been a coach in their life um, will understand that. Like when, when you see the student and they finally realize something or understand it and all of a sudden their eyes are uh, wide uh, open oh. and it's like, wow, okay. Like, you know, they, they realize something. It's just nice. It's, um, <laughs> you help them so much. And then especially if they are so happy afterwards, it's like, yeah, you do something good, I feel. Yeah, it's called personal yeah. satisfaction, I guess. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Um, one, re uh, one really interesting part for me is the fact that you're also writing blogs. Mm -hmm. You have this blog called EDM Producer Tips. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, regarding some tips and tricks, how you do it, what equi equipment you use, and so on and so on. Uh, so where does this writing interest come from? Um... I don't know. I, I always had an interested in, interest in that. Um, I was always also interested in um, websites and stuff. It's not the first website I'm running. Mm -hmm. um, this is a funny site uh, information. So in 2000, no, when I was 15, let's say like that. Um, when I was 15, I ran like a website for online gaming. So for Diablo 2, okay. player versus player, uh, I... I um, like I built an online league for a low level player versus player. So like uh, the gamers will know what I mean. And uh, so I built the whole league system, like a login system. I was just 15 years old. It was funny. And <laughs> the whole big community uh, was built around it. We had like, uh, I don't know, several hundreds or even in the thousands of members. And I had a whole staff uh, of like people who love to do that in their free time. And we did real life meetings. And like, so I always had this kind of passion to create in any way, whether it's like music production or writing or oh, wow. websites, uh, programming. Yeah. That sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, maybe for me, one of the most useful um, articles that I read over there is the one named the mindset of a successful DJ and music producer. Mm -hmm. So you talk, you write actually about importance of different aspects such as education, skills, um, collaborations between artists, uh, marketing, of course, uh, relationships and so on and so on. Uh, can we talk a little bit about those tips that you gave over there? Yeah, like, um, the, you know, I, I meet a lot of very talented artists. Mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of them and um, they have a lot of potential, but Many of them, they never really reach their full potential because um, they lack in, in other areas. So uh, they're not consistent enough. They uh, don't do the networking. They, uh, you know, like, it's so important. It's so important. This is why I said the, the mindset of a successful uh, producer and DJ is not just being talented. Mm -hmm. You have to do so much more than that. And... Um, yeah, just having the right context is the, the most important thing. I think you need to get out there. You need to meet people. You need to make the right context. Mm -hmm. Like, um, this is how I did it in the start. And it was, it worked out well, I guess. And uh, uh, yeah, I, honestly, I don't remember everything I wrote in there because um, it took me several hours to write it down. But um, I can remind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, Go but ahead. this is actually a cool advice for you know young producers, young people. I think this is good because you, at the beginning of your career, you experienced the yes. same stuff, so yeah. you can talk uh, about it, you know, and to direct young people, you know, where to go, what to do, what to pay attention at, you know. So I think this article is really good, and actually the whole thing uh, regarding this uh, blog. Mm -hmm. Uh, is really useful for young people. But one thing uh, that my eyes stuck on while okay. reading it. Now it gets interesting. <laughs> yeah. No, it was the part when you said uh, perfectionism is bad. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah, because, you know, I, uh, of course, I can relate to that. It's the reason why I was reading it so carefully. <laughs> like, yeah. Because you know that I'm crazy perfectionist like you are. I think you were a lot more before. Yes. I but was. you, you know, by the time you learned how to handle that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's true. Um, this is just, um, it depends, of course, how 
uh, uh, how much of a perfectionist you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I would say, a little bit of perfectionism is always great, but if if it gets too much, then uh, it's in your way. I would say, like um, for example, I think the best people in the industry, they're great at outsourcing things. They give things out of their hands. Like, mm-hmm. let's take the prime example, Armin van Buren. You, mm-hmm. you think he does all the, the ASOT radio show, he, the ASOT events, all of that by himself? No, no, he has like a huge team around him and he's great in finding the right people uh, to do this stuff for mm-hmm. him. So he's always like, um, he's a guy I really look up to and um, so th- that's a prime example. And um, for me, it's also like, you know, um, I give this out of my hand and that out of my hand. And maybe there is a mistake here and there, but will it even make a difference in the end? Most probably not. So I don't, I shouldn't really be stuck on small mistakes here and there. It can be a very, um, um, like negative for you. Like Stressful. Uh, it holds you back and like it mm-hmm. wastes your time mm-hmm. to double check everything and so on when it really doesn't matter so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is what I meant with this uh, paragraph. I would say. Yeah, but it's. I think it's really hard to find that people that you can really rely on. You know, and this is the reason why these kind of people, including me, <laughs> uh, are that much wasting, literally wasting time. You know, to get to that point where they're completely satisfied with something because they have something written in their mind and mm-hmm. it should look exactly the same, mm-hmm. which is not you know important that yeah, much but, exactly but yeah yeah it is something that you also should learn <laughs> everything in the description video with what we talked about this so guys you can check uh it and feel free to contact dennis if you need help regarding production um so i'm just going to say uh soundcation right mm-hmm. now how cool is that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> please this explain this amazing idea uh of this gathering project Mm -hmm. um, and the connection with Bali that I mentioned before Mm -hmm. Um, and um, yeah just go briefly yeah so um, soundcation is basically a a mix of the words sound vacation and education Mm -hmm. so um, it's basically I I run retreats with my business partner Edwin who actually was one of the first students I had we became business partners Uh, so um, yeah, we run these retreats and we basically invite other instructors, three other instructors and myself, and we teach um, music production to a group of maximum 15 students. Mm-hmm. And we get like very inspiring locations that we rent. For mm-hmm. example, our first one was in Bali. And then ever since we uh, did the retreats in Bali once a year, but we also did other retreats. For example, in Berlin, in mm-hmm. a castle. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did one in Bulgaria, actually, in the mountains. We did one in Thailand, um, in Phuket. Mm-hmm. So um, we did one at ADE in Amsterdam. So always also very, very cool spots. And for us, it's very important, not only the seminars and the teaching, but also um, that the people connect with each other and mm-hmm. with the instructors. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's just a very nice friendly setting and um, you know everyone can network because like i said earlier networking is so important and um that's the whole idea we just Mm -hmm. uh, we're just a group of geeks having fun for a week (laughs) with music production (laughs) (laughs) you did like a trans retreat and but you also did a techno retreat right so a different genres involved not only trans Sure. Yep. But how do you choose um, actually those famous DJs and producers that want to be part of this? Um, we have, um, like, it depends on several things. They should be, of course, good producers. Mm-hmm. That's number one. And then, um, of course, they should be open minded to the project. Like, not everyone is comfortable being with 15 students in one property for a week. You mm-hmm. know, like, mm-hmm. some people want their, their you know, their time to themselves you know so they need to be comfortable with the with the concept and then of course we need to see the potential like that they are cool with the guests you know and um, all of that so Mm -hmm. i think these three factors play a role and of course how well they prepare the seminars and so on like a a good music producer doesn't equal a good instructor so that's also important to in any industry (laughs) literally okay Uh, I guess a lot of producers out there would love to know how you start making your tracks do you actually begin with the melody or bass line or I don't know um, drums or something else 
Yeah, um, this is a common question, and um, uh, there's no real answer to that. <laughs> it can be anything. Uh, it can be a melody, of course. It can be a vocal that a singer sent me, an a cappella vocal, where I built the track around the vocal. Mm -hmm. It can be um, drums as well, like my track Reconnected. Um, It was created during a student session. Like someone, uh, one of my students, he wanted to learn about my drums mm -hmm. and how I program them. So I started doing that during the session with him. And then I was like so inspired by the drums that I just made a track out of it. <laughs> and that was reconnected. So um, always different. It can also be that you take an old project of yours um, and you already have all the sounds in there and then you start a new melody with all these sounds. Mm -hmm. So but you already have like a very well produced template, let's say it like that, um, and that can also work. So it's always different. Like um, I know there are a lot of instructors who teach just one way. They say it has to be this way or it doesn't work, you know? And a lot of students struggle with this approach. Mm -hmm. And I'm always, like I always take a, take a look at, at my student, like they, they need to be comfortable with whatever. Like if they want to start with a melody, great, then we can do that. If they want to start with the drums, also great. Mm -hmm. We can do that as well. Mm -hmm. No problem. So um, I think you should always keep an open mind on, on these kind of approaches. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. no right and wrong in music production anyway. Yeah, that's, that's basically about that, the freedom. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. um, so I'm sure sometimes production can be challenging for you. Right? What happens when you're stuck in the middle of something and you have no idea what to do? <laughs> yeah, um, it used to be a bigger problem back in the days and now after so many years of music production it's not really an issue anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I just stop, I just put the project aside and if it lays there for months, no problem. Like I mean then I would just do some other stuff in between, you know, like so <laughs> that's it. You, don't, you shouldn't pressurize yourself. If it doesn't flow, it doesn't flow. <laughs> This That's is a good thinking, actually. <laughs> yeah. I need to I need to borrow your state of mind for sure. <laughs> do, do you want me to coach you? No, just <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I will call you about that. <laughs> I'm gonna send you an email. <laughs> okay. um, so uh, sometimes I think uh, it can be super fast, mm -hmm. you know, producing some track. Sometimes it can take ages. Exactly. Know? Exactly right. Yeah. So does it depend on something or I don't know? Just uh, how it flows, like like mm -hmm. I said, like sometimes, like uh, on my last album, there's a track that I did literally in three hours. That's the quickest production I've ever That's done. That's the quickest ever. Oh yes. wow, nice! Three hours. This is unbelievable. Wow. Like uh, back in the days when I started, like, the, music, like a complete production. Yes. Wow. Well, without the vocal. So okay. to be fair, without the vocal, okay, then okay. the vocal production took another day or two. Uh huh. But the playback was done in three hours, and usually. I would say it takes eight hours at least, sometimes 16 hours, but sometimes I can be stuck for weeks as well. Mm -hmm. So um, the opposite example from that album would be, so I was talking about When Our, when Our Worlds Collide, that track mm -hmm. was done in three hours, the playback, oh, wow. Losing My Mind, mm -hmm. that track took me three completely new attempts. So I did three whole productions until I was satisfied. Always started from scratch again because mm -hmm. I just couldn't get it right. Yeah. And um, so that took weeks or months even. So, wow. Uh, and these so. are the tracks for the last album. We're going to talk about yeah. it. <laughs> okay. Um, so when comparing production like 10, 20 years ago uh, and production nowadays, what do you see is good and what is bad? Products, let's call it that yeah. way. So, the advantage and disadvantage. Or? Yeah, yeah, there are definitely a lot of advantages mm -hmm. and many disadvantages as well. Because um, it's like with everything, um, the process became fully digitalized, like or mostly digitalized. So, um, like I would say, let's start with the disadvantages. So. Um, Like, I feel the productions aren't as organic anymore as they used to be. Like, back in the days, it would be just be, um, people would record the automations um, of certain sounds live. They would play the whole track and they would do the automations, the filter curves and stuff live on the mixing desk and all of this. And nowadays, it's just painting and it's a linear line, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like, There's no organic uh, stuff in there, you know? Mm -hmm. It just feels very 
programmed. Mm -hmm. So, and then there were, um, I think it was a little bit more um, intuitive back then. Um, people would just, um, there, were, there were mistakes done and then these mistakes led to something sounding very cool, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. there were these imperfections. Um, and nowadays it's all like digitalized and like, um, like qu quantized fully. And then it's like just very, um, yeah, too much in a, in a uh, grid. So it's way, um, yeah, the, this organic feeling is lost a little, mm -hmm. I would say. Not with every genre, because some genres really pay attention to that, but uh, I'll say mostly... Like what? Like Deep House, Techno, mm -hmm. Progressive House. Like there, they really pay attention to this organic feel. Like mm -hmm. the shakers have to be a bit uh, uh, unquantized and, um, you know, um, imperfections are good and uh, all of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. In other genres, it's like more striving towards perfectionism in terms of music production and I don't think it's always that that good what is better is the sound quality for example like mm -hmm. you you have so many tools these days um, that are amazing and you can do things you music producers uh, they, they would have never even dreamt of being able to do this uh, 25 years ago and now it's like nothing it's just two clicks you know so it's um, these are this is amazing like and you can yeah, I can just take my MacBook take it to Bali, mm -hmm. put on my headphones and produce a track on the balcony. That, that 25 years ago, you had to invest into a big recording studio, um, put in like half a million euros or so. Uh, so yeah, it's a whole different world these mm -hmm. days. So mm -hmm. this is great. Yeah. But do you actually like the direction where music is going? Oh. Mm, I think yes, I do. Um, because... Mm -hmm. Um, things are getting a little slower, a little bit more sophisticated again. I think the the time of the uh, peak time EDM in your face, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is gone, which is nice. I think um, it's just it was a little too much and a little bit too exhausting for the ears. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so the the music is getting more sophisticated, like um, ma like mainstream. Like people like Camel Fat, for example, they, they became very popular and it's like sometimes on the radio as well and so on. And it's very uh, much more calming to the ears than the EDM stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it's less processed and more basic, which more uh, closer to what we have done in the 90s. Yeah. So I think the direction is good. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. But do you have a feeling sometimes um, that a lot of tracks look alike nowadays yeah they do but that even happened end of the 90s like there, there's so many copies of mm -hmm. tracks um, mm -hmm. uh, listen to Armin van Buren Blue Fear mm -hmm. and listen to Mauro Picotto like this like that the melodies are almost one to one mm. and the lead sounds are almost one to one so even back then it happened yeah yeah um. It has all, I think it has always been a thing. Even in the 80s or 70s or 60s, there was a popular record and then all the other guys tried to copy this formula. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just human nature, to be honest. I, I, I yeah. definitely think the same because uh, um, especially right now, I think a lot of DJs, uh, it doesn't really matter what genre we're we talking about, but they're you know using those old school classic tracks, famous tracks, and just you know, add something related to their style and show that to the world and everyone reacts like it's something completely new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it sounds, you know, practically the same. Yeah, I think yeah. you're referring to the techno genre and that a lot of the techno guys are remixing all trans classics. But For example. But I feel... Um, um, they're, they're, there's a reason for that. Like, I mean, they, they want to be able to to play these records in their sets and mm -hmm. kind of modernize the sound a little yeah. and but they they mostly keep the spirit of the tracks not every remake or every remix but yeah. a remix but most of them they keep the the spirit of mm -hmm. the old original mm -hmm. which is great and then um, they can play it out to new crowds they learn about the history of dance music mm -hmm. so that's good, true that's true yeah. i'm fine with that <laughs> and i feel like the the techno music now is getting very close to the 
trance music from the 90s. And this is why a lot of like techno artists can actually play the tracks from the 90s, the trance classics, mm -hmm. in their sets, and it doesn't even sound very off. Like mm -hmm. it sounds like it's just another slow techno track mm -hmm. with a bit more melody. Mm -hmm. So, which is great. Yeah, I exactly. think that's a good, a good development. It is for sure, you know, but you know, people call it right now like melodic techno. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as you said, it's practically, you know, trans from the 90s. Know. Yeah. yeah 90s. But I, I um, so this is my opinion. I told you that um, before mm -hmm. as well, that I think that actually techno sounds uh, is closer to the true spirit of trans than the uplifting trans nowadays. Mm -hmm. So it's a funny development i think <laughs> i don't know okay yeah. yes indeed okay uh let's try something uh i have this thing i do every single time it's called blast from the past <laughs> okay or down the memory lane so i always find something interesting or funny Okay. Um, about my guest. So this time I decided to use something from your Instagram profile. Yep. <laughs> ah, this is amazing. This is cool. Yeah, so this is your first ever gig as you yes. wrote over there. So, so cool. Where it was and I how it in, went. <laughs> it was in Moscow. Oh, wow. And the promoter who booked me, he wrote me a message on MySpace. Yeah, my he was like, hey, hey, are you available for a gig in Moscow? I was like, oh, wow, what is this? And then I, I just referred him to my, uh, the agent of my label that I was signed to back in the day, Euphonic Records. Mm -hmm. And um, this agent, he said, yeah, I can take over the, uh, the contract and stuff. And he even got me a second gig in Russia the same weekend. And uh, yeah, that was my first gig. And I was like, I was nervous and I was like... Should I even go? Like, um, is it even for me being in the spotlight and all of this? And after this, I was like, fuck, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like you had so much fun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> These guys, they came to me, uh, like a group of, I don't know, eight people or so. And I thought they wanted a photo. And all of a sudden, they take me and throw me in the air. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. This was cool. 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 Okay, uh, let's talk about your last album. Uh, find Sunrise, which is super amazing, I have to Thank say. You. I think music lovers accepted this pretty well. Uh, what is your... Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes. I have it too. Awesome. Pizzeria. <laughs> yeah, that's the cool. one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what is your favorite track or most personal track? Um, uh, oh, there's no favorite. It's like... Every artist Everyone will tell says you. that. Yeah, but it's true. Like it's yeah. like choosing your favorite child. You know, you can't. You can't. Um, to be honest, there, there are so many tracks I'm proud of. Um, it's also because I was much more involved in the songwriting process this time. So, um, find the sunrise itself is mm -hmm. very close to my heart. I wrote this with Katy in the studio. We we kind of um, the lyrics are like fifty fifty. Um, it's amazing, but. Um, yeah, like this one is is great. Um, so many, so many good ones. Miss you is like a dedication to my nephew the, who lives in Germany and that I miss uh, so much uh -huh. sometimes. And um, I don't know, like well, when our worlds collide um, is uh, close to my heart. I wrote mm -hmm. this, uh, the lyrics, mm -hmm. um, almost all of them by myself during a flight from Spain to Berlin. <laughs> So I had the playback and then I was uh, writing down the, the uh -huh. lyrics and um, losing my mind. Is, oh. Yeah, this one is, uh, I wrote this um, in October 2019. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that one is uh, very close to my heart. I also wrote almost all of the lyrics myself with mm -hmm. Katie Heath in the studio. Yeah, it's, uh, there's so many good ones on there, I think. Um, it's uh, for sure, I think, my, my best album to date. I, I agree with that. Oh, that's yeah. good. <laughs> that you have that, that kind of opinion about your tracks. Okay, you mentioned, of course, a lot of great vocals. And you also mentioned that uh, you usually do it all together. Not only by yourself and not only by someone who is singing. Sure. Yeah. So I guess some, someone, it, it goes other way around sometimes you are the one who is writing and somewhat sometimes it's the vocalist yes right? um so 
Usually it's the vocalist who comes mm -hmm. with the first ideas and mm -hmm. maybe the, the topic of the song. Um, but in this case, I um, did it the other way around with some of the songs where mm -hmm. I chose the topic and um, the setting and all of this. And mm -hmm. it's always easier to co-write when you are in the studio together mm -hmm. because You're sitting next to each other. The singer will try a vocal melody. You're like, yeah, this high note, it should be maybe three half tones lower or whatever, right? Or uh, let's try it with, the, uh, with these lyrics or those lyrics, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very easy. Over the internet, it's not so easy because like um, the singer sends you ideas. Then you need to maybe write down the feedback. And it's, it's just a lot of work and, and you could just do it in five seconds in the studio. But over the internet, it takes you like half an hour every time, you know, mm -hmm. so it's very draining, I think. So over the internet, um, it's often either I do a lot of the work or the singer does like the lyrics and the vocal melodies and I just give feedback. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is how it usually works. But how does it actually go? Do you make a track first and then send it to a vocalist or... Usually, yes. So I do like a, a playback, a rough playback, um, like a demo version. Mm -hmm. And then I see if the vocalist is inspired. And then if they really like it, then we s uh, decide to work together on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's okay. it. And then maybe they... Like it is also always different uh, um, with the singers. Like some of the singers, they just send me the vocal melodies without lyrics. So they mm -hmm. just mumble something or whatever. <laughs> and then we, we write the lyrics later on. So, or sometimes they come with a fully polished uh, vocal production already and I just have to put it on the production and it's done. Exactly. So it always depends. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it does. And it depends from vocalist to vocalist as well. Yes, yeah. for sure. So you made this album during the pandemic. Actually, you published it during the pandemic. I, I guess you started it before. Mm -hmm. And for sure you did some tracks during the pandemic. Yes. And uh, like many artists, you were also crazy productive during these crazy yes, times. I was, yeah. Uh, so did, did you find the situation good in some way for your personal development? I'm not talking only music creativity related. Yes and no. Like um, there, there's a lot of benefits. Mm -hmm. Like um, I was very productive with the, with the music stuff. Um, I found a new passion uh, called calisthenics. Uh, I was always into fitness, but um, calisthenics is a whole new level for me. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I, I felt um, very focused on myself. Like I wanted to, I'm always the kind of guy, like I try to make the best out of a situation. So I started cooking a lot for myself. I really paid attention to my like health and all of this uh, mm -hmm. more than before. And um, that was really good. And then I started reading a bit more again. And it kind of felt good in the beginning to have this peace and like not being not traveling all the time mm -hmm. not meeting people all the time but after a, f a while it got really really draining yes right so yes. everyone knows what i'm talking everyone about everyone understand so it we, we're all sick of it i guess yes and, um, yes i think it's tough to stop <laughs> yeah yeah But like now i mean i think we we human beings we have to connect with other people mm -hmm. and um this is something i i watched the jess podcast as well and uh -huh. <laughs> she also said it like she she yeah. misses the connection with the mm -hmm. um, people you know and i think it's super important for us to be happy mm -hmm. socialize is so important i think Yeah, so I completely it's, agree. But I think it's it's a different level for you, artists. Yeah, you know, I mean, everyone needs that. But for you, it's something definitely different because this is what you live for. You know, for those fans and people's yeah. reactions and so on. True. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we're not gonna go further with this topic. <laughs> okay. Um. So this album was actually released for Black Hole Recordings, right? So, but you also worked for other big labels like Armada, Anjuna Beats, Universal Music, Spinning Records, and so on and so mm -hmm. on. So, what? Wh uh, who was the easiest to work with, and who was the toughest? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot, like you did with Jess. A little that's, bit. <laughs> that's naughty. <laughs> so I will take the same route as Jess. You know, yeah, I can't say. Oh, come you know? on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, the easiest. Uh, There are, oh, there are a lot of labels which are very easy to work with. Um, mm -hmm. For example, Black Hole Recordings is very easy. Um, they're very chilled, the guys. Um, they really don't try to take advantage of the artists. They're super fair and um, communication is good. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's very supportive. Um, 
encouraging. So mm-hmm. I, I'm really happy with Black Hole Recordings and I, I'm very happy they picked up this album and yeah, the whole working relationship is very enjoyable with them. Mm-hmm. So that's great. It was also great working with High Contrast Recordings um, mm-hmm. on my first album. They're also great people. Um, so there's, there's always... Um, all of the labels, you know, are, are great. There's always, I guess, certain things that could be better with certain labels, but mm-hmm. I think overall they all do it trying to do a good job and trying mm-hmm. their best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I expected something more juicy. <laughs> what can I say? What but can okay, I say? okay, I'm not gonna torture you. But I would you. say um, <laughs> one thing I would say is I prefer working with smaller labels rather than big labels mm-hmm. because um, I feel like. Smaller labels is way more personal. Uh-huh. You're not just a number mm-hmm. as an artist. So exactly. um, I'll say like a, a major label deal, it can be good to push your name, but it can also be very bad because you're mm-hmm. just a number. And if you don't deliver, if you don't sell enough, you're gone the next day, you know? So um, this is the downside of it. Mm-hmm. So I, I, it's like, um, yeah, I just prefer working with the small labels. You, you, it's very personal and they, they really... Um, support you as an artist mm-hmm. and all of that. Yeah, so. I think this is the case. This, uh, yeah. it's, this is only about the support. You get more support, definitely. So I can I can agree, I think, because I talked to a lot of different artists and they all have the same opinions. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's play a little game right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can you please pass me the board? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. So over here okay yeah. <laughs> we have seven numbers okay as you can see behind every number there is a question hidden okay. so you will need to choose three out of seven yeah. numbers and i'm gonna reveal those questions that i need you to answer on okay okay <laughs> it's nothing dangerous it's not hard to answer on trust me and it's not personal so don't worry about it <laughs> Okay. So, um, three. Okay. Let's see. Biggest challenge. Biggest challenge. Um, wow. I don't know. Hard to, hard to say. Um, <laughs> I would say... Overall, in my life, um, personal development, like mm-hmm. always trying to learn uh, about yourself, mm-hmm. um, how to react with the environments, um, how to make the best out of things. Um, you know, like you never stop learning. And mm-hmm. I think um, it, it can be a challenge, but it's also great. So, yeah, I think. Okay, I agree, definitely. <laughs> okay, next one. Five. Five. Five says... Okay. A track That's a good on one, repeat. actually. Yes. What tracks would you like to listen to the end of your life if you needed to? Oh, ah, okay. Well, that's <laughs> different than now. I thought a track that no, I have on, on repeat only now. Only one track that you can pick. Yeah. And you, de- you, 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 the only track that you can listen to until you die. <laughs> wow. What would it be? What? There's uh, two that. Well, I think uh, so. I have a trans top 10 right okay. and um the first two came immediately to my mind but i can cannot make a decision which one i would choose for this so it's uh, thrill seekers uh, synesthesia uh-huh. i love this melody it's one of the best melodies ever done in trance in my opinion mm-hmm. and then the other one is uh, motorcycle as the rush comes with Damn. jazz <laughs> that one is uh, i've played it uh, on a lot of gigs as well the mm-hmm. original mm-hmm. old version from 2004 mm-hmm. i think it always works. It always works. And it's always. a nine minute version. It's crazy, but yes, it works. I agree. So, and I always get goosebumps from it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And this is, I mean, if, if the, taking the lyrics into consideration, it could actually, they may make sense when you end your life as well. So, okay. traveling We're somewhere. We're not going to go there. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> Too dark. Okay. And the third one? Uh, seven. Seven. Oh, this one is good. Um, okay, tell me, what is your biggest insecurity? Um, there should be something where you feel insecure. 
<laughs> I don't want you to use it against me, you know. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm writing down right now. And, you know. <laughs> okay, my biggest insecurity is using my biggest insecurity against me. Yeah, <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think uh, uh, biggest insecurity. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think uh, sometimes this is some something um, where I lack sometimes with the networking part. I don't want to be annoying or a burden, right? So uh -huh. let's say I meet someone like Armin that I really look up to and um, I want to be annoying, you know, like talking to him all the time. And like, yeah. so I'm a bit insecure there, you know, I don't want to push myself onto people. So mm -hmm. um, I think uh, that's that's one of the biggest i yeah. think uh, this is another thing we are alike so. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so i can relate okay cool um let's continue with a couple of more questions um so of course i did not forget to mention this um so you also have another project related to techno music yep uh, you decided to give yourself a name dr dirty <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why dr dirty and what sound medicine can this doctor prescribe to us <laughs> <laughs> the techno medicine, yeah. the dirty techno medicine. Obviously. <laughs> so um, it all started with uh, the techno retreat. So I mean, I was uh, interested in techno music production for a long time, but mm -hmm. um, not a long time. It actually it's a recent development that I started liking techno music more and more. And um, so we hosted this techno retreat, and I learned more about the production side of techno because it's very specific, I think. So you need to know a few things here and there before you can actually start doing it even though I've produced like 13 years before that when before I did this retreat in 2018 but um uh yeah after that I started producing the techno music and it was very well received like Amada wanted to sign in uh, sign it there was a statement mm -hmm. recordings mm -hmm. um Ruben Duran's label mm -hmm. and um the the first EP was very well received and uh, so I'm very happy about that. And why Dr. Dirty? So um, I had my best friend who lives in Bali. Uh, uh, his name is Blake. And he uh, he looks like, uh, <laughs> you know, this um, these, these bottles. Um, it's like detergent or something, Mr. Clean. It's like this bold guy uh -huh. with muscles yes, and the white yes, shirt. Yes, 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 I know. So he looks like him, okay? <laughs> so uh, we started this this project. Uh, and we, we, I thought, hey, you have to call yourself Mr. Clean. You just look like him and it would be so funny, right? <laughs> and then, uh, so I had to match that somehow. So, like, he, if he's the clean guy, I'm the dirty guy, you know? And sometimes we can switch roles, you know? I can be clean, he can be dirty, you know? So this was the whole idea. And then why doctor? This is um, a nickname I got on the retreats because I'm so specific with my music production. Mm -hmm. I'm very clinical, like a surgeon, you know, with their scalpel. Mm -hmm. So this is why I got the doctor uh, nickname because mm -hmm. I'm just so, yeah, yeah, like specific. So uh, I just combined that to Dr. Dirty and now nice. it's a thing where I wear the doctor's uh, robe, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it's just a funny thing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny, but it's cool, like, in, I think. <laughs> so uh, you like doing sports. You mentioned this before, mm -hmm. and of course I know that. So you're working out every day almost. Uh, so you're also doing that, I think, wall climbing. There is a specific name for that or? Yeah, Walltopia in okay. uh, Sofia. Yeah. Yep. Uh, is there anything else that helps you with stress relief and keeping your balance in your body and mind? You mentioned the reading that you did at the beginning. Yeah, and um, uh, like w one thing I miss in Bulgaria, I must say, is I'm not bicycling anymore. So um, because the, the roads are not so good in Bulgaria and the car drivers are a bit crazy, so I'm a bit scared <laughs> to ride my bicycle in, okay. in Bulgaria. So um, this is something I miss because that was a little bit of therapy, I would say, like when mm -hmm. you want to calm down, you know, you go on the bike, mm -hmm. drive somewhere and, you know, it's, it's great. You can do that over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, like, uh, for example, also um, going for a massage is very nice as well um, mm -hmm. to calm down. And um, I don't know. Yeah. Reading is nice. Even cooking sometimes can mm -hmm. be very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things like that nice 
meeting friends for coffee as well can be so nice and like all these typical things good friends yeah. not every yeah not <laughs> good friends not annoying friends <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, exactly okay so uh as mentioned before physical contact with our friends colleagues fans is what we all miss the most but there should be something you don't miss when being at gigs traveling etc what is that one thing there is a lot of more is it called sleep Uh, deprivation or something uh, sleep deprived um, yeah. yeah I know what you mean <laughs> yeah, I miss, don't miss that like, uh, sometimes after the gig weekends you feel so drained um, uh -huh. because of all the traveling in such a short amount of time on the gig day you have little sleep and so that's something I don't miss to be honest um, yeah but okay. that's what it like I, I really I, for me um, the, the gigs what was most enjoyable for me was always getting in touch with the people, you mm -hmm. know, seeing a new culture, seeing a new place, um, getting to know locals. And yes, the gig itself always was enjoyable as well, but I think all everything around that was even more enjoyable for me. And I heard uh, other DJs saying that too. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. <laughs> nice. Um, so what can we expect from Dennis, the instructor and producer in the future? So, I mean, I'm working on new music, of course. Um, like, now we close the chapter, the Find the Sunrise chapter. Mm -hmm. I just released the deluxe album version of this with all the remixes and, and so on. So, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, so, we closed this chapter. Now, I'm working on new music. Um, I may be doing another album, depending on how it goes, sooner or later. Mm -hmm. We will see. Um, Then, of course, more Dr. Dirty music. I think uh, things are opening up and I think next year will be even better. So more <laughs> gigs are happening again. So I can push the, the techno project a little bit more because <laughs> um, I really want to play some of the techno gigs as well mm -hmm. under Dr. Dirty. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that I can host the retreats again, the Soundcation retreats. That would be amazing. I hope I can do one-on-one -on -one sessions with students again in person much more than the last one and a half years because that was really, I almost did it only online mm -hmm. and uh, I want to travel again to my students and because I enjoy that much more. Um, what else, what else? Mm -hmm. I think uh, my sound is changing a little bit. It's becoming like my Dennis Shepard sound. It's becoming a bit deeper, a bit slower. So a bit further away from trance, but like the essence of trance will always be there mm -hmm. in, in my music. It's just um, like a different um, form and shape. Yeah. But like I will always be a sucker for melodies and yeah. That's understandable. I can, ev I think every single trans producer can relate. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever they try, they always, you know, have the, that trance um, in their blood. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, this was fun. Definitely. <laughs> I hope this conversation was pleasant for you and you felt relaxed. <laughs> I did, thanks. Yeah, okay. There were a few tricky questions. No, just kidding. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> It was not that bad. <laughs> okay, uh, this is something special. I ask every guest, um, actually, I asked everyone that came in the studio. So, I will need to ask you as well. Behind you, there is a poster. Um, called uh, Fingerprint Tree or Signature Tree for Creatures of the Night because okay. we are all Creatures of the Night <laughs> I repeat this all the time but yes we are so I will need you to leave a mark over mm. there so I can keep this as a great and significant memory cool. right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. and um, do you actually do you have a hard copy of my album already? No. So you can keep this in the studio as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Well, I don't remember last time actually I played a <laughs> hard, hard copy of that like a CD, but it would be nice actually to play it. I think that the sound is a bit different <laughs> than what you listen to, you know, Spotify, YouTube. Yeah. I think it's about the same. It's more like a collector's item these days, mm. to be honest. Yeah. Because like, um, it's all digital. It would be a different sound on vinyl, mm -hmm. but uh, on a CD, um, it doesn't matter so yeah. much. Yeah. Are you planning yeah. to do a vinyl, maybe, at some point? I don't know. I don't know. Because maybe that would be with cool. a techno like... project. Maybe with a techno project one uh -huh. day. Uh, oh, but nice. I don't know. Um, we'll see. I, I, I personally, I don't DJ on vinyls. I've never learned it. 
to be honest. Mm -hmm. This is a challenge I would like to do one day. Uh, I wanna, uh, want someone to record me mm -hmm. and I want to uh, learn how to DJ in vinyls and make it a challenge, you know, like how, how much time I need. Oh, cool. So I think I can learn it in an hour, but maybe not. We will see. Huh? <laughs> I think you, you just put the new challenge <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's good. That's good, actually. <laughs> okay. Also, I prepared one symbolic gift for you cool. uh, because I want to thank you for taking part in this show um, and letting me and everyone else who were watching and listening um, to go with you on this journey mm -hmm. into the music industry. Okay. Okay. So this is something for you. I hope you like it. Thank you. <laughs> you can check it. <laughs> oh, nice one. Thank you. <laughs> I hope the size is good. If it's not, tell oh, me. I can. It's too big. You know, I was on a heavy diet the last two months. It's, um, usually I'm an L. So I'm sure you have an L. I right? have I have a solution <laughs> for you. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, dear Alice, once again uh, for this lovely conversation. I am thank sure that well. everyone enjoyed this episode. Uh, music lovers out there, um, please share your thoughts. Feel free to send me a message on Facebook, Instagram, or email, whatever you want. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube channel, uh, like this video, make a comment if you want, and share it with the world. Um, and remember, we're all connected by frequency. Until next time, take care and have fun. Bye-bye.